What is up everyone, my name is Abbas, your Protopy expert, and welcome to part 3 of our tutorial on web transitions. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to do a slight horizontal scrolling as we continue to scroll vertically. Now if you haven't already, please be sure to check out part 1 and 2 of this tutorial series because we'll be building on a lot of concepts that we've already covered. Alright, so let's jump into our file and let's see what we've made so far. I'm going to go ahead and click preview. And so far we've done the intro transition and this transition of animating elements when we scroll on to a certain position on the web page. And now we will try to make this work horizontally. Now there's a special kind of technique involved in making this guy scroll horizontally, stuff appear. Uh, as you scroll vertically and that is we have to create a dummy scroll container let me show you what I mean so to start I'll go ahead and create a rectangle by pressing R on the keyboard and just clicking on the artboard here I'm just gonna drag it on the top left corner and I'm gonna make it just as wide as our container and I will make it just as tall as all of our components so that is 4196. This should cover all of the components. However, I will also add maybe 1024 more pixels of dummy scrolling space. This is a space that we'll use to give the horizontal scrolling effect. Keep following through. I'll keep explaining more as we go on. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a plus and 1024 here and that's going to change the height of the rectangle to 5220. This is going to give us an extra 1024 pixels of space. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press Command G so that this guy falls up into a container as well. Like earlier, I'm going to go ahead and add a scroll here. Make sure it's vertical, everything else is in place. And just like before, the scrolling won't work if the container is the same size as our component, the rectangle. Right now it's 5220. So let's go ahead and make this container just 1024. That's the size of our viewport. And finally, because this is going to serve as a dummy scroll container, I'm going to go ahead and change the fill for the rectangle and I'm going to make it 0. The reason I didn't change opacity is if you make a layer's opacity zero, you can no longer interact with it, the user can't touch it anymore. When you change the fill, it still stays interactable, but it's just not visible. And that's what we're going to make use of. So right now, you have a scrollable container on top of the earlier container that we made, but we can't touch it anymore because this container is on top. And you know we can't touch it because if you go into the properties pane on the right, you can see that I haven't selected make lower layers touchable. That means all our interactions are going to be limited to this layer now. Now the first thing that we should do is make the dummy layer control the original layer we had. We're going to do this by using a trigger called chain. Chain will continuously check for values of a specified layer and then continuously apply the responses that we choose. This is different from range because range will just check for that value once and then push out all the responses that you've programmed. Here it will keep on happening continuously. Let's see how. In our case, we want to check for the scroll value of this new container that we've made, container 2. So I'm going to change the value to scroll. Now I'm going to change the scroll value of container 2 to the scroll value of our original web page scroll, which is container 1. So in response, I will add a scroll and this time apply it to container 1. Now we know that the scroll of container 2 will go from 0 to 5, 2, 2, 0. Whereas the scroll of container 1 went from 0 to 4, 1, 9, 6. Let's see what this did. Let's click on preview. And now if I start scrolling, you can see it works just like before. However, there's a small difference. Let me show you what I mean. Now, if I start scrolling, just pay attention to the touch point. 
you can see that the touch point is going higher up whereas the scroll is not exactly the same. That's because we're using a scroll layer that has 1024 more pixels to control a layer that has 1024 less pixels. So the difference is resulting in this kind of parallaxy effect as you can see here with the touch point. But we don't want this effect right now. What we do want is we want to get to this third area and we want to hold off on the vertical scrolling for 1024 pixels. That's why I use that number. So we want to hold our vertical scrolling for 1024 pixels and apply a bunch of effects in that time. So let's start by first holding our vertical scroll. We know that when you go from 0 to 1024 everything stays as is and then when you go from 1024 to 2048 which is 1024 times 2 also stays as is. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to put a 2048 here and then we're going to change this guy to 2048. Now what this does is all of our scrolling is going to match from 0 to 2048 before both containers. Let's see what this did. So as I start scrolling and as I start reaching 2048 it's going to stop working because there's no more chain configured. But we do want the scrolling to resume after 1024 pixels. So I'm going to add a second range here. And this time I'm going to make it 2048 plus 1024. This is a pretty nifty trick in Protopy. You can just do all the arithmetic here. You don't have to mentally calculate. And then from here we want it to continue from 2048. And then from here it goes to 5220 which is the end of container 2. And this guy goes to the end of container 1 which is 4196. Now we've accounted for the extra 1024. So let's see what happens now. Now as I start scrolling, it's going to seem like it stopped scrolling for a thousand pixels but then it's going to continue scrolling. It's important to note it just looks like the scrolling has stopped. In actuality, we're still scrolling the rectangle in container 2. Only our visible content appears to have paused. Alright, now for the next part, what we want is as we continue to scroll vertically, which as we know is happening, we want these guys to move horizontally. To do this, I'm going to go ahead and go into area 3, which is this place and then I'm gonna add a container. I'm just gonna make sure that the container that we're making will match exactly this rectangle. So I'm just gonna go into this place here and add a new container and then just drag a shape here and just make sure that it perfectly matches. I know that the rectangle is 535 and then I'm just gonna move this guy a little bit. All right, now next what I'll do is I'll drag this guy here make sure it's all aligned and now we have these three squares as you can see I'm just gonna go ahead and select all of them and put them inside this new container that we've made you could have your images here as well now in this new container that I've made I'm gonna go ahead and add scrolling again this time it's going to be horizontal because all of the contents are laid out horizontally no need to change any of the other factors Next, we're going to use the chain trigger once again. So inside of our original chain trigger that is applied to container 2, we're going to add another scroll response. And this time, we're going to make the content scroll horizontally. So let's see here. So here we know that the container 2 goes from 2048 to 2048 plus 10224, which is 3072. And that mean, and in that time, we want container 3, the new one that we made, to go from 0 to a specific value that we need to find out. So let's find out this value. I'm going to go ahead into container 3, and I'm going to select all three of these layers, and I'm going to group them again just so that we have a consistent width, and that is 1445. So that means at this point of our container, that's at 0, and then at this point of the container, that's 1445. We want to go up till here so that it's visible, 
So we're going to go ahead and in our chain scroll, we're going to write 1445. And since each box has a height and width of 445, I'm just going to subtract that much. And let's see what that gives us. So now, as we scroll vertically, this content is scrolling horizontally. The only difference is, I think it's slightly misaligned here. I think about 10 pixels. So I'm just going to quickly fix this guy. And take another look. There you go. Seems perfectly aligned now. Now we want also to clip this content out. We don't want it to be visible outside of this container. So I'm going to go ahead and click container 3 and then scroll down on the properties pane and then click clip sub layers. So anything outside of this container is not going to be visible. So now as I scroll down, content starts scrolling horizontally. And if I scroll back up, it just works both ways. This is exactly what we wanted to do. Now let's do one more cool thing. We want the text to seem like it's scrolling up and down vertically. For this, we'll use a slightly different thing. We'll use range. And the reason to use range instead of chain this time is because we don't want the text to be stuck dangling somewhere in the middle where it's half visible and half not visible. We want it to fully come into effect as soon as a certain scroll point is reached. So that was the difference between range and scroll as I described earlier as well. And now we'll see it in action. So I'm going to go back to our file and this time before I add a range trigger I will also initialize these guys just like we've initialized every other component before this. To start I know that all these three text layers need to show up in the same position. So first I will go ahead and select all three of them and then align them to the top layer and now they're all aligned. And the next thing that we want to do is initialize these to the position where they'll be coming from, which is an opacity of zero. So let's go ahead and add another start trigger. Again, you could use an older one, but just for organization and cleanliness, I'm just going to use this one. And then I will add an opacity response and apply it to our second text layer, which is wide ones. Change the opacity to zero and then duplicate this guy by pressing say command D or control T if you're in Windows and apply it to square ones. Now the reason we're not applying it to our first text layer which is tall ones is because it's going to be visible to us at the start. We don't need to program any other interaction for it. Alright, I also want these guys the wide ones text and the square ones text to come down from a slightly lower point than where they are right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add a move response. Here I will take a look at their actual position which is 577 and then just add 56 to that because I just want like a little bit of movement. I will go ahead and duplicate this and change the first one to wide ones. So now wide ones and square ones both move in from 633 and then move up 56 pixels when the range trigger comes in which is what we'll do next we will add our first range trigger for the range trigger this will come into effect as soon as a specified value for a specified layer is reached as you will recall in our previous tutorial we want the range trigger to apply to container 3 we're going to check for the scroll position of container 3 this time so change the value to scroll and this time, now we have three squares and we have three texts. So we know our total scrolling is going from 0 to 990, which means if there are three things that we want to show, we can just divide that by three. So if the total scroll distance is 990, that means we could go to 990 divided by three. So that means between 0 and 990 divided by 3, if that's the scroll position of the container, then the range trigger will come into play. We'll go ahead and add our first response, which is going to be a reset. We want to reset all values of the, the first text layer, which is tall ones, when it reaches this range. 
So let's apply this to tall ones. Now, we're going to apply this to tall ones even though we haven't initialized tall ones yet because the different ranges that we'll make will alter the properties of tall ones and we want it to be reset. The next thing that we'll do is we will make sure during this range none of the other text layers are visible. So we want to make sure that the opacity of wide ones is zero and duplicate this guy and then the opacity of square ones is also zero. In addition to that, we also want these two text layers, wide ones and square ones, to be at their actual position again. So instead of remaking the responses, I'm just going to select these two, copy them, and paste them because that's just what we made. Now we have our first range set. Let's go ahead and duplicate this range interaction by pressing Ctrl or Command C and then Ctrl or Command V. And now let's make this range the second part of our scrolling. So this time it goes from 330 to 330 times 2, which is 660. Now in this second range, we want the second text to be visible, and that is wide ones. So this time we want wide ones to be reset into its original value, and the opacity of tall ones to be 0. Not just that, we also want to move tall ones a little bit higher. Because we moved the layer down by 56 last time, we're going to subtract 56 twice. This is going to make it move up. And make sure that it's set to tall ones. Alright, now let's go ahead and duplicate this a final time. And this time for the third range, it goes from 660 to the final scroll element, which is 990. We reset the square ones, which is the third text, and then we want the opacity of the other two, which is tall ones and wide ones to be zero. And this time we want to make wide ones also scroll up. So we're going to go ahead and select wide ones here, subtract this by 56 once to bring it back to its original position, and then twice to make it go up. And just go back and make sure that when you're initializing them in the start trigger, make sure the duration is set to zero so that they happen instantly as the prototype loads. And now let's preview this. So now you can see the text is scrolling vertically or appears to be and the images in our carousal appear to be going on horizontally even if we scroll vertically. I'll also take a moment to explain the difference between range and chain here. The range trigger is applied to the text layers and the chain trigger is applied to the horizontal scrolling layers. You can see the difference when I start scrolling. Chain makes the scroll happen continuously. However, range comes into effect as soon as I reach a certain point. It doesn't dangle the text in between a certain area. It just happens as soon as a certain point is reached. Alright, now wasn't that easy as pie. With that, we're done with part 3 of our tutorial. In part 4, we'll learn how to add a parallax effect here. Alright, I'll see you in part 4 then.